First of all, you will hand. You right. Sit here. There you will be suspended from the gallows and then cut down before you have become unconscious. So I'm conscious of everything that's going to happen to me for the next few minutes. You are quite conscious. Able to witness the rest of the torture. That is exactly the purpose. And then you would have to submit to being castrated. What's the point of that? This is to ensure that you would not have any future children who just might have treacherous thoughts similar to yours. But I'm not going to have many children after I've been quartered and hanged. It is purely symbolic. Right. And then I would proceed to disembowel you. Using the slitting knife, right. I slice your stomach wide open. The blood would be pouring over the scaffold board, splashing out, because your heart, while you still have it, is pumping away. I would plunge my hand inside and withdraw your entrails. I say, they're not mine. I show them to you before your very eyes. So I'm still alive watching all this, that's the idea. You are indeed. Again, I reach into your parted stomach. Your liver follows. Oh dear, it's in better condition than I imagined it. And finally, of course, your end draws nigh as I extract uh, ah. your heart. At that stage, you're dead. Thank God for that. Following that, I would proceed to decapitate you. And your head would then be placed on London Bridge as a warning to all those entering the city, behave or else. OK. Right. I shouldn't be nodding at this point, should I, obviously? <laughs> no, <laughs> I would be nodding your head for you. I would then finish off the process by quartering you, slicing your body into four more or less equal parts. The quarters would be dispatched by fast horse rider back to the towns and the cities in which you had lived and plotted. Right. And there they would be placed over the city gates so that all the population, all the residents would realise what had happened to anyone who conspired against the sovereign. <laughs>